So this is to take a look at experimental choice number two, radial net force versus speed. Um, in this case, we have a data table to help organize our information, mass, radius, the period or change in time, radial net force and speed. Down below here, we have um, a graph, which we're gonna turn into a radial net force versus speed graph. And these are some buttons to help change what variables are on the axis. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at the video up top where we're changing the speed and measuring the radial net force. So first of all, to make the speed or tangential speed our independent variable, we have to open that up and we're gonna click independent, which will push that to the far right. Now it only gives us one option for the radius when we're testing the tangential speed, and let's go ahead and choose 20 grams. You could use 50, but either way is good. And let's go from the smallest speed to the largest speed as we go. Once you do that, you have to hit go to bring up the new, a, a new version of this experiment. So in this case, we want to be able to measure the radius. So we had pulled the measuring device out there, and we have that centered in the experiment right here. And then we've got a force probe. Uh, we'll click on the stopwatch so that we can figure out how long it takes to get once around there. Let's go ahead and play this and see if we have things lined up in a pretty good spot. So the best way to take data for this is to um, let the mass get to the outside edges. So there's an outside edge. I'm gonna use this black bar to go forward or backward, or you can use the arrows, the right left arrows to move forward or back. But I wanna to go to the outside edge of this, which it looks like it's about there. So at this point, I'm gonna reset my clock. I'm gonna hit play. We're gonna allow it to travel once around the table or make one revolution, and then we're gonna pause it right when it hits back on that 30 centimeter mark. And it looks like we've gone just a little bit past where we were before. So when using a 20 gram mass and a 30 centimeter radius, it took four seconds to go around. And we'll come back and look at this force meter in just a little bit. So 20 grams, 30 centimeters, and four seconds. So our 20 grams is to be put in, in kilograms, so that's 0 0.020 kilograms. The radius was 30 centimeters, or 0.3 meters. The period, the amount of time it took to go around was four seconds, and we'll have to go up and find that radial net force. Now, taking a peek at this, we actually have to peek at this pretty closely. Once all the way around here is one newton, so halfway around is at 0.5 newtons. It looks like this is 0.2, so this darker line here is 0.1. So that means each one of these is one-fifth of 0.1. So that means they're each worth 0 0.02 newtons. And that's even before. It's not quite up to that first hash mark. So I'm going to guess it's probably 0 0.018 or 0 0.0175 or something like that. Let's go ahead and go back to something that's closer to normal size here. And go back to our data table. And what do we say? 0 0.018 for our first reading. Now to calculate the speed, we know that it's the distance divided by the time, and since it's a circle, circumference divided by the time. So maybe we could find a formula for that. Let's go ahead and put a formula in here, and we know that the circumference is 2 times pi. There's no pi button, so we'll have to use 3.14 times the radius of our circle. And we have to divide that by how long it takes to get around our change in time or period. Um, can be there, and then I'll hit go, and sure enough, it calculated the speed for us. You can fill that, fit, uh, punch that into a calculator to double check, um, but I'm pretty sure that that's right. Um, so, at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and find another um, speed. To do that, we're going to go to speed two. Keep the 20 grams and the radius the same. We hit go, pulls up another video. Just like before, we're going to go ahead and hit go. We're going to wait till that mass hits one of the outside edges. That's pretty close to an outside edge. Bringing it a little more forward, a little more back, a little more forward. And now I'm going to reset that clock. We're going to let it once go around. Try to pause it at the 30. Looks like we're right about there. And so with 30 centimeters, and again, the 20 gram mass will come up here. And now we're going to have to look at that meter up close again and it looks like we're just beyond that so maybe point 
2.024, 0 0.025, something like that. And so we can go, go add that to our data table, 0 0.024. And it looked like we had change in time of three. And I can go ahead, these radius, the radius is not going to change. In the so we'll go ahead and find the third speed and go ahead and hit three for our third speed. Hit go to find the version of this experiment. We'll hit go. And it looks like right away we hit that outside edge. So let's say that's the beginning. Let's hit reset. We'll let this make one full revolution. We'll pause the video and it hits back at the 30. And it looks like it's about at the edge right there. So 20 gram mass, 30 centimeters. It took two seconds to get around. And if each of these is worth 0.02, that's 0 0.02, 0 0.04, that's at 0 0.06. So two seconds and 0 0.06 uh, newtons, 0 0.06 newtons, and that took two seconds. And I had previously gone in and filled in the mass and radius because those are remaining constant. Uh, let's keep cranking. Go to four, and you go ahead and hit four, plug those values in. You'd have to do the same thing. Go ahead and go through the whole steps, and pause it, and all that good stuff. Um, reset the clock, hit go, pause it on the far side, and it looks like it's right at one second, and we have about 0.24 for that, and you'll have to do the rest of that on your own. You'll only have one more left. I, did a, I guess I did a little too many of them. 0 0.22, 0 0.24. So if we go down to our graph here, we've got speed we want to have be on the x-axis, and the vertical axis, the thing we measured, our dependent variable is radial net force, and we want to take a look at that now. That looks like more like a curve, kind of like, oh, like when we did the wheel and axle lab, we had a position versus time graph, and we had that top open curve, and we ran into that again on the freefall lab. Well, how did we go from a position versus time graph to linearizing that? How did we manipulate the axes? That's right. We had to, we had to square the clock reading. We had made a position versus time squared graph. In this case, we'll need to do a position versus speed squared graph. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we have this extra column up here that we can make speed squared. So we'll make speed and we'll bring that to the second power. The units for that would be meters squared per second squared. And now we could go ahead and punch those into the calculator twice or we can come up with a formula. So we'll change the formula and we'll make this speed times speed, which will make speed squared. You hit go and it fills those in for us. Now we can take our horizontal axis down here and change it from speed into speed squared. Now that we have a radial net force versus speed squared graph, you notice that the slope um, is linear. So we have a constant positive slope, a y-intercept that's zero, um, which would suggest that radial net force and speed squared are directly proportional. And by hitting that linear regression, we got our y equals mx, y equals the slope times x with the y-intercept being very close to zero, so our y is radial net force, the slope of 0 0.0669, uh, and the units would be newtons per meter squared per second squared times the speed squared. Now we do have a y-intercept down here that says 9.37 e negative four. We've talked about this before, with uh, especially with y-intercepts in Logger Pro. And if it ends in E negative, you can assume that it's zero. But what does that really mean? It's 9.37 times 10 to the negative fourth power, which means we'd have to take that decimal point where it is and move it four times to the left, which would make that y-intercept 0 0.000937 newtons. But let's take another look at this graph over here. The graph is a positive constant, has a positive constant slope. And all year long, when we found a slope that was constant, it went back and tied into something that was held constant in the experiment. Well, if we changed the speed and measured the radial net force, what things were held constant? If you came up with mass and radius, you're correct. So you're gonna to have to do a little bit of analysis with the value in units of the slope. Look at the units first, newtons per meter squared per second squared. Is there a way that you could somehow make a connection back to the mass and the radius? 
once you've done that, you should check the values with that relationship that you found or that ratio of those two things that you found and see if those values match up too. I hope this helps.